Muchas gracias, muchas gracias a todos. First of all, I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to be here today, representing my country and sharing a little bit of Brazil's legislation in this such amazing event. When we think about the nature and environment, we frequently forgot that this is the environment we are all inserted in. Fortunately, a few years ago in 60s, we started to realize how important it is for all of us to care about our environment and stop the degradation we started long ago. Since then, several world encounters were made all around the globe so the countries could finally sit and discuss how we could stop the degradation, recover our environment system and rebuild some parts that we have already destroyed. The countries were starting to realize that the life of human being is just in our hands. Distinction of other animals could also cause our instinct. With the destruction of some environments, things like water and even the, the air that we breathe could also come to an end. In Brazil, our constitution in 88 already talked about the right to the environment in its article 225 that in a free translation says, everyone has the right to an ecologically balanced, balanced environment and access for common use by people and essentially essential for healthy quality of life, imposing to the government and the community the duty to defend and preserve it for the present and the future generations. And the constitution goes on talking about the duty of the public power to preserve and restore environments and ecosystems, to map areas of protection, require environmental impact studies on certain works or constructions, promote environmental education, protect fauna and flora, prohibit practices that can, that can cause them to be extinct, endanger their ecology functions, and the most important thing, in my opinion, that subject animals to cruelty, among others. In 81, we create the law 6938 that provides about national environment politic. It proposed mechanisms for formulating and applying its protection, among other provisions. My speech does not intend to deal with criminal matters involving the environmental or even the administrative sanctions for it, because we have a very short time in this speech. But it's extremely important to mention this law because it specifically deals with the center theme of this lecture, the objective responsibility of the agent that degrades the environment. First of all, the law 6938 brings the concept of environment and despite having been created before our federal constitution has been accepted by it and provides to preserve, improve and recover the env environmental quality <clears throat> conductive to life, providing conductions for socioeconomic develop development and interests of national security and protection of dignity of human life. When you talk about environment protection, we used to think of the paralysis of financial growth and economic development. Well, however, when we really aim to building, and I say build because more than a protection, we have to build a new society, a new way of thinking. So when we aim to build a healthy environment for all the species, we have to think that this environment belongs to us. It belongs to us as human beings, as citizens of the world. So, when the second article of the law 6938 brought us the, as the objective, the protection and preservation of the environment, it brings us exactly uh -huh. the concept, including among its principles, government actions for such protection, rationalization of the land use, protection of ecosystems oh. and incentives for research and technologies for rational use and protection of the environment. One of the principles brought by the law under discussion is the principle of restoration of the graded areas. That says that it's not enough just to prevent degradation. 
we have to seek to restore what has already been destroyed. And the polluter place principle is, another, in another hand, aims that who caused the damage needs to pay for it. At this point, I remember a case I've worked in which societal groups from the gold bearing area has been sued for allegedly having been the co-author in the degradation of a giant areas close to indigenous villages. The group itself and destruction of minerals are not relevant. However, in these records, I was able to see with my own eyes the complete degradation of the soil. Oh. Uh, to the point that it's no longer had the necessary nutrients to make it possible to plant trees and restore the ecosystem without the same soil being first treated and prepared to receive again the ecosystem that it should shelter. The trees that existed there gave it way to rice plantations that were used by local mining workers for their own food. Milks. Hills gave way to excavations with backhoes and vegetation. And vegetation gave way to cutter ants. It's a type of ant from Brazil that is able with its strings to cut leaves among other objects and do not allow tree seedlings to grow. Based on the environment study carried on, it would take years to restore and rebuild environments microsystem of that area and many million of reals, our coin. As I mentioned at the beginning, the environment is not mine or yours. It's ours as a society, as a world. And in this way, as our federal constitution says, it is also a right for all, a good for common use by the people and essentially healthy quality of life. Living the community and the government with the duty to watch over it. When someone, a person or a group of people destroys something that belongs to everybody, that someone needs to be punished. That's the polluters need, the polluters needs to pay for, the, for restore it. Thus, the article 14 of our law 6938 brings us the punishments for the agent that degradates the environment saying that, without prejudice to the penalties defined it by the federalist, federal, state, and municipal legislation, if failure to comply with the necessary measures to preserve or correct the inconveniences and damages caused by the degradation of environmental quality, the offenders will be condemned. And it goes on predicting penalties, tickets, simply or daily, loss of restric uh, restriction of government benefits, loss of participation in financial lines, suspension of activities, among others. Finally, in its first paragraph, the article in question establishes that the liability of the agent, without prejudice to the prevalence penalties that I talked before, regardless of the existence of fault, for identifying or repairing the damages caused to the environmental and to third parties affected by this activity. When we talk about guilt or fraud, we are dealing with the need for the persecuting, a persecuting entity to prove a casual link between the fact and the damage, the intention of the agent's fact that caused the damage, and finally, the damage itself. Thus, when the law removes the responsibility for the suing angel, agent to prove this intentional or culpable uh, culpable conducts, the suing entity is left with the need to prove only the casual link between the conduct and the effect caused by it, that is, the environmental degradation. The Superior yeah, Court funny. of Justice in Brazil has several judges' cases about the subject, and I separated two jurisprudences that approach the subject in this interest in an interesting way for analysis in today's speech. The first one is a judgment occurred in 2014, which the Superior Court has pronounced about a damage from a breakdown. 
which was an environmental accident occurred in January 2007 on Mirai and Muriae, states of Minas Gerais. It takes an analysis of theory, theory of integral risk that aims the objective responsibility and the casual link of the agent's conduct, saying that A. Liability for environmental damage is objective and formed by the theory of integral risk. The casual link between the factor that allows the risk to be integrated to the act. So it's not possible the allegation by the company responsible for the environmental damage of exclusions of civil liability to remove its obligation to identify them. B, as a result of the accident, the company must recompose the material and moral damages caused. And C. Do you like dogs? When fixing the compensation for moral damage, it is recommended that the judge do, do it in a case-by-case -case analysis and in moderation. Proportionally to the degree of fault, the socioeconomic level of the out author and also the size of the company, guided by the judge, uh, the judge by the criteria of reasonable, taking advantage of this experience and common sense, attentive to the reality life and its peculiarities, of which case, so that in one hand, there's no unjust enrichment of the person, person who received indemnity, and in the other hand, there is the effective compensation for the moral damages experienced by the one who was injured. And as judgment, we notice that uh, the exclusions of culpability, such as acts of God or force of major, are not applicable when we're talking about damages to the environment. The compensation for damage costs is another hand, was measured by the degree of culpability of the agent in this case, a company. Also considering the socioeconomic level of the demandant, which was a third party, and the size of the company defended. The agent causing the environmental damage was sentenced to pay material and moral damages based on the principle of reason reasonable, which aims to draw a trinomial between the degree of disapproval of the agent's conduct the financial capacity of the parties so that neither is created an industry of moral damages nor an impunity for the defendant. And uh, at least, um, and the disincentive for new similar practicals that we call pedagogical character of condemnation. The second judgment that I believe it's important for understand the subject and mainly dealing with the issue of joint several liabilities when two or more agents are directly or indirectly responsible for the damage and are jointly li liable for the offense is the appeal that we call HESP, Recurso Especial, number 140243 from Paraná. 2013, that was judged by the Superior Court in 2020. In this appeal, the Supreme Court analyzes the judgment from the TRF, that is a Brazilian court. In such judgment, it understands that the buyer of a property or its administrator cannot withdraw his responsibility for the damages. Since the obligations of restoring the legal reserve and permanent preservation area are of the nature propter hem. That is, they are linked to the property. So it's not just because the father acted on the behalf of their own children. As a mere administration of the rural properties, the, that he doesn't share the responsibility for the damage. And the court goes on, remind us that under Brazilian law, and accord the jurisprudence of Superior Court of Justice, civil liability for environmental damage, whatever the legal qualification of the degraded, public or private owner or administrator of the degraded area, 
has an objective liability, solidary and unlimited, being governed by the principles of the polluter pace, of the total repair, and of the priority to repair in natura, which means that the law prefers that the agent itself that degradate the environment makes its own to hit repair. And if it's not possible, then this agent has to pay for others to do it. And the superior courts and this judge saying that in civil liability for damage to the environment, the proctor hem is the legal nature of the environment obligations and does not exclude solidarity between the various subjects involved, owner, possessor, administrator, contractors, third parties involved, etc. Concluding my speech, I explained that the proper REM obligations are those that follow the property itself, such as condominium debits and environmental responsibilities. So that the last judge, the judgment, brought up makes explicit the solidarity of the agent directly responsible for the damage with the responsibility for, uh, for the owner of the uh, property. Property that suffered degradation and it is in an area of environmental preservation. The subject is incredibly vast and I hope I have been able to explain and clarify a little about Brazilian legislation deals with the environmental damage in the civil sphere and the responsibility of the agent causing the damage, even if indirectly linked to it. I end my lecture with a reflection. Since the planet is the house we all live in, taking care of it, becomes more than a duty, becomes a life mission. Thanks you all for listening to me.